Cheryl Victorian. This is Waco PD on the beat. Whether it's crime or just getting to know the Waco Police Department, we're here to talk about things that matter most to you. Well, welcome everyone to episode two of Waco PD on the beat. I'm Public Information Officer Sierra Shipley. And I'm Officer AJ Smith, the Crime Stoppers Coordinator for McLennan County. We really appreciate everyone tuning into our first episode. It was a real big hit, I think, in the Incredible. community. Yeah. yeah, the numbers so, we saw were just awesome. Oh, yeah, and so uh, we're going to continue. I think uh, we like doing this. Yeah. And so we've got episode two. We're excited. Uh, AJ, why are we so excited? So as we mentioned in the last episode, we're going to do more than just talk to you about crime in the community. We're going to talk about the officers and get to know who they are, the person in the uniform, um, kind of more than just the officer on the streets. And that's what we're going to do today. And our first guest is going to be my new partner, uh, in community outreach, Officer Sophie Martinez. She's going to come on here with us and tell us about who she is outside of being an officer and how she got into policing and who knows what else she might tell us. Yeah, I'm excited. Let's meet her. All right. Well, now we have Officer Sophie Martinez here with the Community Outreach Unit. So, uh, Sophie, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Are you? Uh, so tell us a little bit <laughs> about just who you are. Outside of being a police officer. Who I am. Uh, I know it's a big question, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, outside of being a police officer, well, I'm a mom, I'm a wife, uh, I'm a wife to another police officer. So uh, so I have a dual role there. You know, uh, I go in a sense, I guess he's a coworker, but also too, he's my husband. So, you know, I worry about him because I have more details on what he's doing when he's out there serving a warrant or going out there doing his investigation. So... You know, that's that's another worry I have on my plate. Who became a police officer first, you or your husband? Well, it depends on how you see it. <laughs> uh, so when I was 19, I became a military police officer. And uh, and so then uh, I did that for 11 years. And then uh, when I got out six months later, uh, I got into the academy. Uh, but he's been an officer since 1995. Okay, very good. Well, so you were in the military. Thank you yes. for your service. Thank you. So let's take a little commercial break for a second. Okay. I think now's a good time to talk about our victim services unit and the Waco Police Department. You know, that helps coordinate the needs of those affected by tragedy, you know, involving crime. So to meet the extensive needs of our growing community, we provide 24-7 service to crime victims. Yes, and the unit relies heavily on volunteers. Um, those consist of community members that are wanting to make an active, positive impact on somebody's life and make a difference in a victim's life. Um, they're exceptional individuals, and we're always looking for more of them. So if you're interested, we've got some information on how to get involved with that program. Yeah, these are people who are just really have the heart to help and want to make sure that those in your community are getting the resources that they need at their you know lowest point in their yes. life. So if you'd like to become a victim services volunteer and help those in need in your community, you can contact the victim services volunteer coordinator, Missy Sparks, and her email is msparks at wacotx.gov. Or you can also call 254 254- 750-7527, and details are also on the City of Waco website. I highly recommend anybody that has any kind of heart for service to look into that, because it's just incredible what the folks that help with that program do for us. Absolutely, and you're serving not even those in Waco, but the entire county. So are you from Waco originally, or did you just wind up here like I did? No, I'm actually born and raised in El Paso, Texas. Okay. And uh, so... Uh, it's really crazy how I got here. Uh, so I've always wanted to be a police officer. Um, and uh, I graduated from Riverside High School, and ironically, our mascot is a Texas Ranger. Yeah. So, I mean, that's kind of like, I guess that was part of the calling. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so when I was in junior high, and uh, you know, I was looking more in, about going to the academy when I graduated high school, and I found out you had to be 21. So I'm like, okay. So nobody had really ever talked to me about college, so I never considered college. Uh, and I honestly thought poor kids couldn't go to college, so I just totally dismissed that idea. And I said, well, I'll just join the Army, you know. And so uh, my senior year, I enlisted in the Army, and uh, uh, 
I joined uh, the military police corps. At, well, and they told me I didn't weigh enough because I didn't even weigh 100 pounds. So I had to <laughs> take weightlifting to gain some weight. Oh, my goodness. Eat some extra donuts or something, too, probably. No, tortillas. Tortillas. Yes. Okay. So don't put the, do- the donut stigma on us. Yes, yes. I No, the donut thing <laughs> didn't even come to play until after I became an officer, actually. But, uh, but no. I became one, so. Yeah, it was more tortillas, you know, arroz, frijoles, you know. The good Mexican food. Yes. And, uh, but my m- metabolism was fighting me. <laughs> but uh, I managed to gain enough weight to, to get into the military police corps. And uh, so I enlisted. And then uh, I went off to basic training. And then uh, my first duty station was in Washington, D.C. And uh, I got to run with, uh, with uh, former President George Bush Sr., Ride in his limo, call my mom at home. That was like the oh coolest my thing. I just got chills awesome. when you said that. That's awesome. <laughs> it was a really cool thing. Uh, probably one of the highlights of my military career and all. And uh, so my plan was to do three years, get out, go back to El Paso, go to the academy, become an officer in El Paso. And uh, after three years, <clears throat> I wasn't ready to leave the military. Uh, I fell in love with it. Yeah, I just loved everything the structure, uniformity, just, uh, just, the opportunities that it gave me, because by then I had gone to Arizal School, I was uh, I was promotable. Uh, I had gone to a leadership school, and I gone to some other training, and just the experience that I had that three years, I just I, I wanted more. So I enlisted, and I got stationed at Fort Bliss. I got stationed back home in a rapid deployment unit. So I was there 18 months, and I was deployed like three times. So I didn't stay home much at all. And then I went to Germany in a physical security unit for two years. And then when they started moving out the nukes, uh, they sent me back to the States. And I went to Fort Polk. Then I wound up at Fort Hood. And so uh, I spent my last four years there. And then uh, one of our former officers, he was a canine uh, MP there at Fort Hood. And he told me Waco was hiring. And so was uh, DPS. So I applied for both. And the first time I had to drop out uh, because I was pregnant with my son, so I, I couldn't go through the rest of the process. And, uh, but as soon as I had him, I reapplied, and I got in, and I was in the academy six months after I got out. So I know you've got more than one son. Is this the son that is also in law enforcement? No. Okay. No, that was, that's my second son. Uh, no, he's into boating. Uh, he sells boats and stuff. And uh, my oldest is the one that's uh, in uh, the Border Patrol. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Very good. So you said that you applied, but you were pregnant, so you had to, you know, kind of cut that off. And then why did you want to reapply? Yeah, and, you know, it didn't even occur to me, you know, uh, you know, what if there'd be some difficulties and stuff. Because I lived in Colleen, so I was going back and forth to Colleen. But it worked out. Uh, my mom lived with us, so that helped a lot um, that she was there. So that helped. And uh, so it wasn't that m- difficult. So we adjusted. Good. So started with Waco, mm-hmm. and then how long have you been here? Oh, man, it's crazy because uh, in February, I will hit my 25th year at Waco PD. That's awesome. Yes. Congratulations. Thank you. That's awesome. <laughs> so um, it, it's gone by really fast, and uh, now that I'm looking at retirement, uh, it's kind of slow down a little bit and all but uh but now with all the new projects that we you know have been tasked with it's starting to pick up momentum so I have a feeling that the last few years I'm here it's gonna go by really fast oh I bet oh with all the work that you do it's <laughs> going to go by really fast and then so <laughs> well, let's talk about that work talk about kind of your uh, role the past 25 years I know you haven't always been in the community outreach division so right. talk about what kind of got you to where you are now in the department so, of course, like every officer started out in patrol and, you know, when you're when you're a young officer, brand new, it's like, you know, it's it's about, you know, chasing the bad guys, catching them, you know, and and just all that adrenaline rush type work. And uh, I, I had a blast. I used to love doing it. Uh, when other officers would ask me, hey, let's go run a warrant. I'm like, hey, let's do it. Let's go. I was, I was ready to just take on anything that was given to me. Um, I was asked to do a, an undercover sting as a prostitute. And uh, that was different. <laughs> um, it was it was fun, but it was not something that I thought I'd like to do long term. So I kind of ruled that out as part of what I wanted to do. So I'm like, well, let's see what comes up. 
you know. So I was just going with the flow. It's like see what comes out, see what my thing is, and then and I'll go from there. And uh, so uh, when I became pregnant with my daughter, of course, they took me off the street and they assigned me to what we know now as community outreach, which is crime prevention. And uh, I was crime prevention certified already. And uh, Chief Stroman, uh, he was our assistant chief at the time, and he said, I have an Explorer program that I need you to revamp. And I was like, what's the Explorer program? And he's like, well, you know, it's kids, and uh, you're going to work with them, you train them, you send them to competitions. And in my mind, I'm like, kids? I didn't become a cop to be around kids. I'm like, (laughs) I chase bad guys. You know, I'm like, what? So I wasn't thrilled. But at the same time, I told him, I don't want to be sitting somewhere throughout my whole pregnancy. I want to be active. I want to be moving around. I want to be busy. So yeah, so he fulfilled that. (laughs) And so, uh, so, you know, so I took it and I learned what I could. They had five kids. So I had a meeting with those kids and I said, Hey guys, I have no idea what this program's about, what we're doing. So fill me in. And then, uh, and I said, so we're going to work together. I'm going to have you guys, you know, help me on recruiting more and this and that. And uh, I found a competition in Houston. So once we got more kids and all, uh, we started training them. So I got SWAT to train them. I got detectives to come in and train them on different topics, different scenarios that they might possibly get at the competition. So this went on, went on. Well, the time of the competition, unfortunately, was really close to my due date. So I wasn't able to go. Oh. So, uh, yeah, I was real disappointed. And I was like, man. So one of our commanders and our sergeant went. And uh, they left on a Friday and they came back, I guess, on a Sunday. And when I came to work on Monday, there was four trophies on my desk. Oh, my goodness. And uh, when we had our Tuesday night meeting, the kids were just really excited. And so that kind of just just lit something in me. And I'm like, this is really cool. And they brought me flowers. And, you know, they just like... Oh, my gosh, because these kids had been in it for a few years and they hadn't done anything. You know, the program had been real stagnant. So they were extremely excited. So, uh, you know, I was like, oh, this is a cool thing. All right. So I went back to patrol, of course, after I had my daughter and stuff. And then uh, the opening came up for that position. So me and my husband talked about it. He says, you know, it it can work out because he was still in patrol. So I put in for it. And... uh, (laughs) Uh, I got it and everything, and then from there, you know, we started rocking and rolling, and we have a very successful program, and I have, as a matter of fact, last night, me and AJ were at the jail, right, and I see an officer uh, from another agency, and I said, you know what, let me go ask him uh, who their chief is, so I went up to him, I said, excuse me, and he's like, you don't remember me? I'm like, no, he goes, I was one of your explorers, I'm like, oh my gosh. So um, I constantly have, I run into them. I keep contact with most of my former explorers who are off doing their, you know, they have their careers now, families. Uh, This weekend I'm going to a baby shower of one of my former explorers. You know, she's a registered nurse, she's successful. And so it's been very rewarding. And I've been able to also, you know, I've had kids that come up and like they've had a, 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 parent in prison and you know I had a young lady and she's like you know I don't know what I'm gonna do he's supposed to be coming out and I'm just I go you have mixed feelings I said you're afraid he's gonna come and try and take over what y'all have been doing this whole time she was yeah and I'm kind of mad about it I said I know I said I was in the same situation when my dad came out of prison and so we had that connection so that background that I have uh, with my dad is like I, I can connect with the kids whether it's exploring or outside in the community so that's something that, that I just kind of stumble up on. And I'm like, if I share that with them, they see that we're not perfect. We grew up from broken homes. We, some of us grew up poor. Some of us grew up well off. You know, some of us were military brats, right? <laughs> uh, you know, and uh, so we all come up from different backgrounds and all. And when kids learn that, they, they kind of tend to gravitate more to you because now they start seeing you as a real person, not the cop. Right. So. Right. Now, I want to talk about the Police Explorer program more, uh-huh. but something that caught my attention was you talking about your dad. Yes. Do you feel like with him being in prison almost led you to wanting to be a police officer? You know what's funny is I've gotten that question asked, and I really can't pinpoint what, what drove me 
to want to become a police officer. I just know ever since, and it's probably about the time after he was sent to prison that I, I just got this, you know, this draw to police. And I do remember one particular uh, situation where I was in school and this DPS trooper came to our class and we're in the library and he was talking to us. And I remember being impressed with the uniform, his cowboy hat, and don't ask me what he was talking about. I just know I just was drawn to the uniform and uh what's funny years later i took my little brother to go get his license at at the uh, dmv and i look up and i see that trooper's picture on the wall and uh, his name was robert newman and i'm like you know i wonder if you realize that just his presence alone you know really impacted me a lot and so whenever i go to schools or all the interaction i have with kids uh, from all ages, I remember that just the uniform alone can impact a kid, you know, just, just your presence and all. And, and they watch you and they see what you do and everything. So I'm very mindful of that when I'm around kids. Always has very shined boots, too. I don't know if the camera will catch that, but <laughs> she is definitely, like, <laughs> all about presentation, form, uniform <laughs> being polished, and that's one of the things she makes the Explorers do, too. Yes, yes. I tell you what, if you leave Explorers, if you know anything, you know how to shine boots. Okay. So Crime Stoppers is my program that I'm responsible for. It's countywide. You reach out to Waco Crime Stoppers, and Crime Stoppers is an organization that bridges the gap between law enforcement, the community, and the media. So it's kind of a, a triangle, and the thing in the middle is Crime Stoppers. So... Uh, a lot of people are discouraged from reporting crime, so we encourage them with the incentive of up to $2,000 if your tip leads to the arrest. Um, a lot of people are discouraged from reporting crime because they don't want to have any retaliation or in fear of retribution, so Crime Stoppers keeps you completely anonymous. I don't know who you are at all, um, unless you put your name in the tip, and then I remove it so that your name is no longer associated with that tip. Uh, crime Stoppers kind of helps encourage the community to get involved to help our law enforcement partners solve crime, and the up to $2,000 helps fight your apathy from wanting to report. The anonymity helps fight the fear of retribution, and um, we allow you to anonymously submit your tips. So you can submit a tip by calling 254-753-HELP, which is 4357, or... Spells help. Yes. <laughs> For those of you that are old enough to remember texting with just nine digits instead of, like, the full keyboard, that might right. help you remember that. <laughs> and then um, you can go to wacocrimestoppers.org, or you can download the P3 app and... I highly recommend that because then if I've got a question for you or, you know, you want to add more follow-up information, you just log into this anonymous app and send me that info. Um, and remember that your tip is always anonymous and you can earn up to $2,000 if it leads to a successful arrest. Yeah, and those tips that do come in can and, and have led to successful arrests before in the Absolutely, past. Absolutely, yeah. So just last week, someone got $1,000 from a tip that led to an arrest, so... That's awesome. It's a, it's a really cool program. Well, we appreciate those tips. So send them in. Uh, Crime Stoppers, like AJ said, keeps you anonymous. Talk more about that Police Explorer program. Mm -hmm. What it, it is really, why it's important for those kids that are in it. Um, and talk about what those competitions are, too. So uh, bo uh, Explorers is part of, part of the Boy Scouts program, and uh, but it's career-oriented. So uh, any business, like uh, you can have a fire Explore program. You can have a an EMT explore program, culinary explorers, of course, law enforcement, um, just different different uh, professions. So, if an organization, you know, wants to sponsor an explorer post and teach them about that profession, they can organize it. Um, but uh, of course, you know, we we have police explorers, and basically, you know, we meet every Tuesday and they learn about the profession. We do training sometimes. Uh, all have uh, different areas of the police department. They come in and they talk to them or they do training. Uh, I'm getting ready to have one of our crisis negotiation officers come in and train them on how to deal with a with a crisis situation. Uh, if there's a hostage involved, you know, how do they go about talking to the hostage taker and all? Because that's part of the competition. They can get that, that scenario. I'll have like our IA sergeant come in and talk to them about that side of law enforcement, you know, when somebody files a complaint on us or, 
or where we're involved in something where we have to get investigated. Uh, we talk about um, they've been involved in several of the funerals we've had recently where they come in and they help out. Uh, but also, too, I wanted to see that side of law enforcement as well, that, uh, you know, paying the ultimate sacrifice. Uh, and, and that's what it's about. And they see how we all come together as the thin blue line that everybody knows us as. Uh, and uh, they know about presence, you know, how your appearance can make a difference. So we talk about the force continuum, how it starts with, you know, how you're dressed, you know, whether it's in civilian clothes, whether it's in your uniform, you know, they're going to look at you and they're going to they're going to automatically start an impression of you just by how you look. And then once you open your mouth, then they're going to say, OK, this person matches the uniform or how they look. You know, they have confidence in themselves. And I said, because that reflects on what you think of yourself. Uh, when we go out of town to competitions, uh, we go eat uh, anywhere as long as they can eat it here in Waco. So I try and get them to step out of their New comfort zone. Yes, yes, we do that. Um, we do uh, impromptu speaking. So like uh, during a meeting, I'll, they'll come in. I say, okay, today, guess what? Impromptu speaking. They're like, oh. And I'm like, okay. And I'll call one up. I'll say, give me, talk about a nickel for a minute. And so they got to talk about a nickel to their peers for a minute. Oh and goodness. they find out how long a minute is. And then later I have them prepare a speech about a topic they're familiar with. And then they have to come up as a team and do a presentation for about five minutes and all. So, so it's not just about teaching them about law enforcement, but also to just about life in general and just different tools that they can use, whether or not they decide to become officers. You know, if they do, great. If they don't, one, it gives them a, a better understanding of how our department works, a better appreciation for officers. But also, too, if they do decide to go into, you know, to become a law enforcement officer, they kind of have a step step up to others. So I've had them call me. It's like, we did we did high-risk stops today, and I knew exactly what to do. And my instructor told me, how did you know what to do? It's like, I was an explorer. So it was great. <laughs> <laughs> and I think she's underselling just how incredible this program is. So it's been there for it's just shy years, of 40 years. Cause, year. Yeah, so next year is the 40-year celebration. Yes. There's, like, 20 kids, roughly. Yes. We're about at 20 kids right um, now. And it... I've only been down there for about six months helping, and it's just incredible. On Tuesday nights, these kids are excited to learn. They're probably more knowledgeable than I was when I went to the police academy, mm -hmm. and we can have some really in-depth conversations. Like, we started talking about burglary, um, just like we were talking with Sergeant Z last week, and th they were asking such good questions. We got into, like, different levels of, uh, you know, homicide-type offenses and how that related to burglary and it was just super incredible dialogue that we were having yeah, they ask questions That's yeah. they want to know they're eager to learn yes and uh it, it's it's exciting it's exciting um you know but also too they know that there's a fine line that they cannot cross it's like you know we're not friends we're your advisors you know and so they know and uh we have a chain of command so we have a captain we have a lieutenant and uh, I'm fixing to, to promote two, two sergeants, and they'll have their own teams and all. But, uh, you know, they learn about leadership and about delegating and all. Um, I had one young man, uh, his team did not do very well in competition. And he was, I thought he was fixing to quit. And I told him, I said, let me tell you, I said, every successful leader in history has not gotten there because they did everything perfect. <clears throat> I said, they got there because they learned from the mistakes they made from the things that didn't go well, they learned from that and allowed them to help them become a better leader. And I said, so you just learn? And they, okay, came back the next year, they killed it. They got like three, three out of the four scenarios. Oh, that's they, they great. They got awards in. So, and now he's a sergeant in the Army. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome just to see their growth and, and what they do in law enforcement or otherwise, just how they how this program molds their future and what they do yes that's awesome mm -hmm. so it's not that's not the only thing sophie does though she no. does a million different <laughs> things as she takes a big sigh remembering all the <laughs> things that she probably has on her plate today yeah i mean i got so i got red ribbon coming up at the end of the month so we go to six different schools in three days and uh so this is a this is a a um uh, um uh, 
it comes together with different agencies. It's not just not Waco. Uh, I get I get the sheriff's department involved. DEA gets involved because it is DEA that came a red ribbon week. You know, uh, it's because of them this all came up. Uh, we have a DPS come out, uh, the different agencies, uh, you know, uh, the different cities we go to, their agencies also assist us. Uh, Woodway, there every year, you know, Chief Crook, he uh, he lets his SWAT guys come out, you know, and if I need a little extra, you know, he'll he'll accommodate me. So, you know, I, I really love working with Chief Crook. Uh, I'll call him, sir, uh, I need your help. <laughs> you know what you need, and, you know, he'll he'll accommodate, you know, as long as they're they're available. Uh, but we'll go we'll go to six different schools and pretty much the helicopter lands there at the school and the kids are outside and they we try and keep it you know like on the down low and stuff so when you know the kids come out they're outside they don't know what's going on and then all of a sudden this helicopter lands and then all these other police units come in with their lights and sirens and they set up and so we we break out the kids and officers start talking to them and we rotate so they get to go to every station and so there they have that one-on-one connection with every officer and they get to ask questions and stuff but they're also learning about what each specialty that each officer does you know canine SWAT the helicopter you know DEA and uh AJ you're gonna get to talk to him about Crime Stoppers Ooh, <laughs> yes. yes and uh uh, so, you know, talk about different things, but also, too, we try and throw in that message about making good choices so that you can become anything you want to be in life. So so that's one thing. What else? Um, well, you're Let's all, talk about your arms. No, yeah, you got little pink patches yeah. on there. They, they don't look like our normal police no, ma'am, patches. No, ma'am. So and it's uh, Breast Cancer Awareness Month. So, uh, so for a few years, I've been looking at several agencies get involved in this program called the Pink Patch Project. And so what they do is they take their their department's patch and they throw some pink on it. And I'm like, that would be really cool for us to do. So I kind of always had it in the back of my mind. And so last year during COVID, couldn't do any of our programs. So we were kind of in the office like, okay. So I'm like, all right, let's see what we can get into. And uh, pink patch came up and I'm like, oh my gosh, this would be cool to do. And so I kind of started looking into it, you know, and everything. So my commander at the time, um, uh, Commander uh, George, I asked him, I said, hey, you think, what do you think about this, sir? He's like, that would be really cool. And he's like, let me, let me find out, you know, I, let's, we should do it. Uh, but at the time, we were kind of transitioning chiefs. So we didn't have a chief yet. And also, we were kind of waiting to see what was going to happen. And so, uh, so we were told, you know, hey, let's, let's table it until our new chief arrives. And then We'll revisit it. We're like, okay. So then uh, fast forward now, we have Chief Victorian, and one day she called me up to her office, and she says uh, she gave me some pink patches from Houston to send to a gentleman that had requested some pink patches. And she says, you know, uh, we should do this. And I said, funny you should say that, (laughs) ma'am. You're already on it. I jumped in there, and I said, so I said, I kind of started working on it last year and all, and, uh, you know, this is where we're at right now. And I said, so we're waiting for our new chief, and here you are. <laughs> and uh, she says, okay. She goes, well, let's do it. And she says, you know, find out how much and everything else, you know, get with our money people, and uh, we'll go from there. So uh, so we got the patches in and stuff. Every officer uh, got some patches to throw on their uniforms and all. And uh, so this month you'll be seeing officers, you know, in patrol in different areas, and they'll be have pink patches. And it's in support of the pink, the well, not the Pink Patch Project, but the Breast Awareness uh, Campaign. Yeah, absolutely. And we have individuals in our department that are breast cancer survivors yes, themselves. Yes, we do. We do. We've got Officer Nikki Kaufman. She yes. is a patrol officer. And we also have uh, Sarah Slider. She works in our records department. Yes. And so we just are, like you said, raising awareness for breast cancer because mm-hmm. it's definitely something that uh, impacts a lot of people. Yes, yes, and here in the last week, since we got the patches and started giving them out in our department and all, uh, I've talked to several people how this has really impacted that. And, you know, they have families uh, that, that are breast cancer survivors, so this really has impacted them in a very strong way. Yeah. And so it seems like, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, AJ, but it sounds like Sophie really likes her job. Uh, I would say that's an understatement. <laughs> yeah, I do. I, I enjoy it and all. And, you know, it's like, you know, where we started, you know, started in patrol and I really loved being in patrol because 
Every day is different. You just don't know. Don't know what's going to happen. Some days you may be able to do self-initiated stuff. And other days you're just running calls back to back to back. You don't, you're lucky you have time to eat and all. And, uh, but it makes the shift go by really fast and stuff. You're tired at the end and all. But, you know, if you look back at everything that you did, it's like, okay, you know, did I help somebody? Did I help put somebody that didn't belong in the street in jail? You know, what did I do? What difference did I make? And, you know, sometimes we may not think that we do, but just the small things that we do, we make a difference. Uh, I remember working several sexual assault cases in patrol, and then years later um, I would be at another venue, and that victim would come up to me and it's like, she's like, you worked my sexual assault case. I want to thank you for what you did. And I'm trying to think, what did I do? You know, what what did I do that she she feels she needs to thank me? So apparently I did something, you know, and I'm grateful that I did do whatever it is, you know, for her that she she was grateful for it and that it made the process, I don't want to say easier, but I guess, I guess, I don't know, I can't find words. <laughs> well, I mean, you were just doing what you were supposed to, what you, yeah. what you should be doing as a police officer. Yeah. And in return, of course, we're impacting people at their mm-hmm. lowest points in yeah. their life, and we're mm-hmm. trying to help them, yeah. like that one woman. And so I'm sure just at the time, you were just focused on getting the job done, yeah. not realizing the impact you were making on the right. people. And I mean, you know, you show them compassion because they've just been to a very traumatic, you know, situation and all. And just, you know, you, you let that human side of you come out. You know, we're not robots. We're not. And, uh, but, you know, fast forward on what I do, it's like, uh, you know, in patrol, you know, we deal with those incidents and, you know, we have our victims and all, and our heart goes out to them, you know, when we're seeing what they're having to go through. But then when you do what I do and stuff, now I'm dealing with these kids with even, even grown ups. when I, I do a lot of programs and stuff, especially like with our Spanish community. Um, so, uh. I do Spanish programs. Uh, I'm on the radio with Crime Stoppers, and we go on a Spanish station, and they come up to me. It's like, you're the one on the radio, or you came out and you talked to our ESL program, or you came out and you were at this, you know, health fair or what have you. Uh, But a few years ago, Detective Fisher came up to me, and he says, hey, you think you can do the crime-free program presentation in Spanish? to uh, the housekeeping in the hotels. And I'm like, yeah. And uh, he says, okay, well, it's about an hour. I said, wait. I said, it may take longer than that. And he goes, why? I said, because what happens when, when I do programs in Spanish, I said, that's a connection. I said, so once the presentation is over, they come up, they start asking questions about something they experienced or they have a question about, you know, for me to give them a direction of where to go on something or they want to know if they can call me they want to ask me a question about whatever and so I said so it may take two hours he's like really I said yeah and so after a few times that I did it he's oh my gosh you're right (laughs) so so he now he tells the managers he's like okay well the Spanish version is probably gonna take about two hours and he explains to them why and all and then sure enough you know when I'm at about I could be at the grocery store and somebody will come up to me it's like, oh, you know, usted es oficial Martinez, you know, and I'm like, oh, sí, ¿cómo está? And, you know, we'll, we'll start talking and everything. And then they'll tell their kids, you know, este es oficial Martinez, you know, tell her hi and this and that. And so we developed that connection. And, uh, but uh, again, you know, you know, they, they have a connection at the police department, but then like my kids, you know, uh, not only, you know, do me and AJ, you know, serve as advisors, but, you know, these kids, they'll come out and like, I have you know, something's going on. You know, I had a kid who recently, she went through this situation and everything. And, you know, she, she texted me, she's, you know, or she sent us a message and she said, you know, uh, this happened and all, I won't be able to, you know, come to a meeting. I don't know what's going to happen. And I said, you know, chin up, things will work out. You know, things happen for a reason, but there's always a silver lining at the end. And then at the following meeting, when she did come, one of the other explorers brought her a little goodie bag to make her feel better and stuff. And, you know, they come together, yeah. you That's know, awesome. they I come know together. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, they've developed their own little, their own little line of support within each other and everything. But, uh, this is what I do is so much more than just giving a presentation or 
working with the kids. And it, it's, I don't see it as work because I, I just enjoy it so much. And, and if I can somehow, you know, help a kid or give them some direction, you know, it's, it's very fulfilling for me. It's very obvious, like where your passions are and where you, it seems like you get your reward out of like service still, mm -hmm. just in a different capacity than it yes. was on patrol. Yeah. All right. We're going to take a pause here for a second and talk about the Take Me Home program. This is something that I actually just recently learned about Same. myself. Yeah. And so this is a free service, the Take Me Home program. It's available for all residents of McLennan County, for adults and children who have difficulty communicating due to either a developmental or cognitive disability. Yeah, so the database is maintained by us at the Waco Police Department in our communications division, and it's only accessible to law enforcement. Um, so just law enforcement personnel can get this information, and sometimes it'll have a photograph, the information on what their disability may be, a physical description, and most importantly, um, emergency contact information for that individual. Yeah, so this Take Me Home program, it really helps that adult or child who has that difficulty communicating, helps the officer kind of understand who this person is, who that emergency contact is, and where they can go to, you know, have that safe place for them. So these individuals, you know, they tend to be at risk for maybe wandering or include disorders such as Alzheimer's. They might be on the uh, autism spectrum disorder, dementia, Down syndrome, things like that. Yeah, so if you want to register yourself or someone that is a loved one or someone you're concerned for, um, for this program, all that information can be found on the City of Waco website, and it's just to fill out and submit the information, and that way we can have that database and, and help someone out one day. Yeah, a lot. I mean, we do get those calls every once in a while of someone who is lost. They aren't really sure of you know where they are or how, how they're going to get back home. And so in that system, if, if they're in that system, our officer can see, oh, look, this person has this emergency contact. Maybe this is their address or this is where they have other family or friends that can help them out. And that's how we get them to those safe places. Yeah. Or if we come across someone that does have issues communicating, you know, we can potentially reach out to dispatch and say, this is what this person looks like get a picture and potentially identify and get that person home safe. Yeah, so again, that's called the Take Me Home program, and it is a free service available to everyone in McLennan County. And, mm -hmm. and you kind of play two roles, like you said, with your heritage and, and being able to speak Spanish. How, yeah. how important is that for someone like yourself to be able to connect with that side of the community? You know, what's funny, when I started, it didn't even occur to me. I just, you know, I'm like, I know Spanish, and, you know, I can talk to people in Spanish, you know. Uh, it never was a big deal for me in the military. They point, pinpointed it out to me, oh, you're Hispanic. I'm like, yeah, you speak Spanish. Where did you learn <laughs> that? I'm like, uh, where? I just I just grew up speaking it. Like, <laughs> so it's like, it's funny because I never, I never grew up like, you know, I'm Mexican. You know, it's like I was just a girl from El Paso, and that's it, you know, and I knew Spanish. Uh, but as I got into like the military and all, people pointed it out to me. They, I was singled out because I was, you know, bilingual and Hispanic. And I'm like, I didn't understand what the big deal was. I'm like, okay, so I speak another language. What's the big deal? You know, and I'm Mexican. Okay. Yeah. You know, but it was weird how people just made it a big deal. And I didn't understand why. Uh, when, uh, when I was applying, that's one thing that drew me to Waco even more. And I wanted to work for Waco that... At no time did they pinpoint the fact that I was Hispanic and bilingual. They they wanted me for what was on paper and, you know, that, that I was a, a good candidate to become an officer and represent Waco, uh, where another agency, they really pinpointed the fact, oh, you're Hispanic, you're female. And I'm like, okay. That's I'm not going all to, I am. I'm going over here. <laughs> yeah, that's not all you are. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, uh, I've learned that it's, rewarding because like I said in patrol I remember the first few calls in Spanish speaking and it was funny because okay I'm Spanish speaking so I'm like okay we're cool but then they would throw out some words and I'm like what is that so I found out you know they would uh when they were describing a suspect they used other terminology that I wasn't familiar with I'm from El Paso these folks you know they're they come from Mexico and they have other other words to describe a person uh, like uh, one time I was at a call and uh, the suspect was a white male right and uh, so I asked him you know 
what did they look like? And they, was there a uh, es un bolillo? And I'm like, what? <laughs> I had no idea what they meant. I'm like, bolillo, bolillo. Well, my backup happened to be a white male. It's like, you know, they, they pointed at him. They're like, like him. And I'm like, okay, un huero. They're like, see, sí, un huero. I'm like, okay. So I go to H-E-B like a few months later, and I'm buying some hoagies. And on the label, it says bolillo. I'm like, oh, <laughs> okay. White bread. Yeah, I'm like, okay. <laughs> and all. Um, so it was interesting. Uh, so I myself have learned, uh, you know, as well, dealing with the Spanish community or the Hispanic community about, you know, just different verbiage. And also I just, you know, just put it in my little backpack to, to make sure I remembered it and all. And, uh, and uh, I know one of the cool things is when I have a little girl come up and tell me in Spanish, you know, I'm going to be a police officer like you, you know. And I'm like, oh, that's really cool, you know. And uh, there's one little girl that she's become kind of like our uh, – I don't know, we've kind of adopted her and stuff. <laughs> and I gave her, um, when she, Victorian, first arrived, um, her mom had reached out to her, you know, to come out to her birthday party. And that little girl wanted to be the first female chief for Waco PD. And Chief Victorian beat her out. Oh, <laughs> uh, Yeah. <laughs> so but close. <laughs> anyway, uh, we've, we've established a relationship with this little girl and stuff. And so uh, she went to career day dressed as a police officer. And I gave her one of our old police hats. Oh. And every time oh, you saw her at the back to school yeah. bat, she was wearing the hat, <laughs> and then she's got like a little, uh, like a little vest, and she's got a name tag, and you know she's got her sticker badge and everything. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm gonna get you a real name tag, you know, for your oh, vest goodness. and yes. stuff. So it, it's really cool. It's oh, really cool to see so that. Cool to see just such young kids uh, uh, absorb, you know, yeah, what we do and mm-hmm. how like infatuated she is with that role of the police officer, and how cool it is that, you know. She got beat out, but she still wants to hang out with Chief Victorian and you. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know. yeah. And you know, uh, we run into each other all the time, and she's wearing her hat. Well, it's because of yeah. people like Sophie, who, like Absolutely. you said, carry yourself well and have that presence and just willing to make that connection with those young kids, which I think is just awesome. And it, and it's some, not something you can be fake about. I mean, you got to really. I mean, I'm very I'm very protective of my my explorers and stuff. Um, and, and I'm very fortunate that all the officers that I have, you know, throughout the years asked, you know, to, to assist me and help and train them, they give everything of themselves to teach them. You know, one of our SWAT officers, like, oh, two hours is not enough. We got to have like a whole day, a weekend. I'm like, hey, if you're up for it, we can make it happen, you know. Uh, but I love that. I love that. And also, too, it, it helps them step out of the role they have. And now they're educating these young kids and the kids ask them questions and they get so serious into, you know, what they're teaching them, you know, what to do, you know, like how to clear a building, and they are all into it, and it's great, and and I think they love it too. But uh, you you can't be fake when you're around kids. They're they're gonna sense it right away. They're gonna know you're not there because you want to be. Somebody made you there, be there, and just by how you respond to them, they know. Okay, I'm just gonna stay away from you because you obviously don't want to be around me. So they back off and they'll shut themselves down. So So since we're talking about kids and enthusiasm for being a police officer, what is some advice that you might have for a young person that's looking to get into this profession? Or even an adult, maybe. Or an adult, yeah. So, so, you know, with adults, uh, you know, I tell them, you know, okay, you know, you got to look at your background, you know, make sure you haven't done anything that's going to disqualify you. Uh, you know, we have, we have our state requirements, but we also have requirements for, for the city of Waco. Uh, so, you know, you look at, look into all that, make sure you know that this is what you want to do. You know, do your research, look on our website, dig deep, look at videos and stuff to see how officers respond to different types of calls. Know that you're not going to work eight to five. It's going to be a long time before that happens. You know, uh, get with your family, you know, you know, uh, to where they know that you're going to be working 3 to 1 or you're going to be working 9 p.m. to 7 a.m. and so that you're going to have to adjust your lifestyle. Uh, you know, it's not always pretty. Not everybody likes the police. You know, I've had a little kid tear my tear my trader card in front of me because he did not like police because the police took his dad to jail. So I had to pull him off to the side and explain to them about when people make choices, there's consequences. And I always refer to timeout. You know, I'm like, you know, when you mess up, where you go? Time out, right? 
You got sister and think what you did. I said, well, growing up sometimes they make bad choices and they have to go to jail. It's like a time out for big people. And they got to sit there and they got to think about what they did. So hopefully when they come out, they don't do it again. And they kind of can connect those two. They're like, okay, that makes sense. So, you know, I got that little kid to kind of change his mind a little bit. But but for people that are wanting to, you know, it's like, uh, you know, it, it's not like TV. So, you know, uh, you know, whenever possible, especially right now with COVID, of course, it's impossible. But do ride outs with different agencies because everybody's different. You know, DPS may be something like, hey, yeah, I want to be on the highway and I want to be doing this drug interdiction and, you know, catching speeders and, you know, doing all this stuff on the interstate. Or, you know, is your thing more being a city cop, you know, and, and doing a multitude of things? Uh, and then, of course, you know, or do you want to work for a big agency? Do you want to work for a small agency? So it's, it's like picking a college, you know, what college best fits you? you know, not the other way around. So, so I tell them about that with kids. I tell them, okay, so now's the time to start working on it. You know, you got to watch who you hang out with. You got to make sure you stay away from the drugs. You got to do well in school because your background, they're going to check everything. Uh, you know, stay away from bad influences. A lot of times I have kids like, yeah, well, I want to join the military or I want to be an officer, but my parents don't want me to. My mom says she doesn't want me to get killed. I'm like, well, it's, it's not about that. And I'm like, you know, I said, no disrespect to your parents. I said, but it is your life. And if being a police officer is something that's in your heart, something you're passionate about and you want to do, then do it. Do it. You know, I did have a young lady years ago, and she was one of my explorers. And, uh, you know, one of her parents was against her being an officer. She wanted her to become a nurse. And she's like, um, after she became my explorer, she goes, oh, she goes, I did a shadowing. She goes, and I hated every minute of it. She goes, but then one of our officers that it was a family friend uh, told her, you want to come on a ride out? And she said, the minute I got in that car, she says, I knew. I knew this is where I was to be. And so she joined Explorers, and she became one of my captains. She had a little teeny tiny thing. She got a booming voice, though, and she's a <laughs> great leader, and, you know, she learned all these things. And then... Uh, uh, she's now an officer with another agency, and uh, she's been there, I think she's fixing to hit 10 years already, and she's an amazing officer. She's doing a lot of things, and, uh, you know, but it was like, I told her, I said, you know, if you go on and do what your parents want you to do because it's it's safer, you know, I said, anything can happen to anybody at any time, and I said, yeah, this this profession, the risks are higher, I said, but why are you going to do something you're not happy at? You know? Right. I said, it's your life. Mm -hmm. So I said, if that's what you want, do it. She's inspiring me. And I don't even know what I need to be inspired about right now, but I'm inspired. <laughs> oh, my gosh, Sophie. I could have you just, I could listen to her talk for hours. Come we hang almost out with have. us in the basement. <laughs> yeah, <I know. laughs> right, right. <laughs> well, Sophie, thank you. Is there anything else? you want to touch on talk about let the community know as as a police officer now is your chance to say whatever you'd like oh just just know your 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 department is there for you you know uh you know you you need our assistance we're going to find a way to assist you um i get we get a lot of calls transferred down to our office you know and it's for different reasons and i could very easily say well that's not my department so let me pass you on to somebody else but i don't I don't like to transfer people. I'm like, if I can do anything to help that person to where they're not going to get, you know, transferred somewhere else. Sometimes when it gets to me, they're frustrated because like, I've been transferred three times. Right. Yes. And I'm like, okay, this is where it's going to stop. You know, mm -hmm. so I'm like, okay, what do you need? And so they tell me, I said, okay, this is my direct extension, you know, and I said, uh, give me your number. Let me see what I can do. I'll call you back or whatever, whatever it is that, that we can do. And that's that's how our office is. You know, we don't like to transfer people over, uh, like I said, even though if it's not anything pertaining to our office, but we're going to do whatever it takes to get that person what they need at that time and all. And, and sometimes, yes, we may have to transfer, but what we do is we pinpoint them, we give them a person's name, we give them their phone number, like we're going to transfer you if we get disconnected uh, or that person... It goes to your voicemail. This is this is their phone number to so call them back. If you don't get an answer, call us. Call us back, and we'll yeah. get something done for you. So, um, 
you know, again, we're there for our community. We have our trunk and treat October 25th. We do. So excited about that. And the rest of the week, we're going to all these trunk and treats. I mean, literally from Monday through Friday, we are going to trunk and treats and possibly on that Saturday. Mm. Because that officer I was talking to, like, oh, we're having one. I'm like, okay. Everyone's having a trunk or treat. (laughs) Yes, yes. We're going to be loaded with candy and all. But, uh, uh, But it's exciting. It's exciting, you know. Coming together, you make a lot of good connections and all. And, uh, you know, our back-to-school batch was very successful. A lot of people came out and stuff, and I think that really helped a lot with the, the connection between the police department and our citizens. Um, this trunk of treat also. And, uh, you know, I want people to come out. It's October 25th uh, from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m., and it's at the uh, police department parking lot. So there's going to be several agencies there, actually, and they're going to be setting up their their uh, police cars, and they're going to be giving out candy and stuff. We got lots of Snickers. We do have lots of Snickers. Yes. Hey, Snickers full. satisfies. Oh, goodness. <laughs> so, yeah, I think I don't think we're going to be able to give them all out, but we can. I don't know. Oh, we'll if we definitely have definitely give them all out. Yeah, but if we, we have half the turnout we did for the back-to-school bash, and I'm hoping the citizens of this community don't yeah. turn me down or don't let me down <laughs> because – I think we're going to have more people because I think we talked be, about it there. Yeah, we say it's 7 to 9, but I mean, I think I'm placing bets now that we're going to run out of candy by 8, so, maybe. So, But even if we still have Snickers, we still have four we'll get, other yes, trunk of trees we, we got to go to. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> we'll go as long as we have the candy. Yeah, yes. yes, and we'll have a lot of candy, trust me. I know, I know. We should hand out toothbrushes. <laughs> Yeah, maybe have a, a dentist come out there and start <laughs> passing out cards too. Right. Yeah, but okay. we're always coming out with ideas on different things to to just do out in the community and everything. Uh, if you want a security survey of your home, where we can give you some recommendations on how to make your home a little safer, you know, give us a call at our office. Uh, we do presentations, everything personal safety, robbery prevention, uh, active attack presentations, and all. We we do these presentations for for different organizations. Uh, for banks, for stores, for their annual training. Uh, just give us a call, and we'll be more than happy to, to set up a time. Just make sure you call us at least a month in advance uh, so that we can put you in, because like October, literally, I was so looking busy. at my calendar. I have one day in October that has nothing. Oh, my goodness. And I think I'm going to take a vacation day that day. <laughs> <laughs> you deserve it. Because the last week of October, we are... Busy. We're crazy busy because I got red ribbon. We got trunk of treats going on. So, yeah, we're, we're going to be pretty smoked. And then we got celebration and then we got the Baylor games. So, yeah, we're, we're busy. Yes. Yeah. A good busy, though. Yes. Good busy. Yes. yes. Good busy. Well, good. Sophie, thank you so much for joining us today. We appreciate you talking with us. Officer Sophie Martinez. Wonderful. Thank you for having me. All right. Well, that was Officer Sophie Martinez. What a great story. That was incredible to hear. Gosh, when I said I could listen for hours, I still had so many questions to ask her. But that's going to be a lot of editing for me (laughs) later after this. Uh, Well, thank you guys so much for listening to our second episode, Waco PD on the Beat, where we're building relationships, engaging the community. Teachable moments for all. Actively working to keep you safe. Oh, yeah, in order. Actively working to keep you safe with teachable moments for all. There we go. That spells out beat. Well, thank you guys so much. Next episode, we got to... We're going to have uh, Isabel King, our crime victim compensation specialist in our victim services unit. Say that 10 times fast and I'll buy you a coffee. <laughs> um, she's going to come on here and talk to us about what she does with the department. And I'm pretty excited for that. And about our victim services unit. So that's something that not a lot of people realize is even offered when our officers go out to scenes, those victims affected by whatever had just happened. Uh, we have the victim services unit that takes care of anything that needs to happen afterward and what they need to do to get them back to kind of a bit of normalcy. So yes. Thank you guys so much. And uh, we'll see you next week. Wake OPD on the beat. The heartbeat serving 